You see all these writers and producers and actors? They don't hire black people. The diversity on screen debate has run and run through awards season. 16 Oscars are white. White. White privileged racism. What started with the hashtag Oscar so white has spilled over into endless tweets, blogs and opinion pieces. Oscars, hashtag who cares? And here in the UK, it's been the same story. It feels like I'm banging on a bit about diversity all the time. It's because I believe in increasing it. Despite the fact that 13% of the UK is non-white, only 5.3% of the film production workforce is. Just 1.5% of television directors and 2% of screenwriters are from a minority ethnic background. And there are currently no non-white people on the BBC's executive board. So what's going on? Why does the industry still have a problem with diversity? I spoke to people from across TV and film to find out. Everyone is just trying to cover it up. I don't just want to tell black stories. I'm petrified, I'm petrified of this very conversation. The only time you'll see them is if the movie's about civil rights movement or slavery. It's actually plain old racism. The most surprising thing about trying to make this film is how hard it's been to get non-white people in the industry to speak. Off the record, plenty of people have been happy to share their experiences, but there's a real sense of fear about being publicly associated with this issue. One actor who agreed to speak to me is Nathan Stewart Jarrett. He played leading roles in Channel 4 TV shows Misfits and Utopia and is currently in LA. People often say it's important to see yourself reflected in the characters we see on screen. I asked him why. My theory is, <laughs> my thoughts are that it's important in building a sense of identity. If you see yourself on television, when I say yourself I mean someone like you, you feel more part of that society um, and therefore probably will attempt to be part of that society more. I think if you don't see yourself, you are already marginalised. One reason people who make films and TV can be reluctant to use diverse actors is that they worry audiences aren't ready for difference. Manjinder Virk recently became the first non-white regular character on ITV's British classic Midsummer Murders. Please. Call me Cam. What have we got, Cam? Lunch room. Asphyxiation. Poison. This kind of worry that people aren't going to engage, almost like, I find it a bit patronising that people think, oh, the audience is going to not like this because two of the leads are black or whatever. You just have to look at John Boyega in uh, Star Wars and also Daisy, there's a female lead and yeah. black male lead and it makes no difference to the ratings. Also similarly, I, not on the same scale, <laughs> but Midsummer Murders where I, I play a regular pathologist and the show continues to do well. So I think it's just about trusting that you get the right characters. When John Boyega's role was announced, some online protesters argued that you can't have a black stormtrooper. Fears that he would damage the film's success were proved wrong. The Force Awakens is the UK's biggest box office success ever, grossing £114 million and beating Spectre, Avatar and Skyfall. I've come back to Boyega's youth drama club in Peckham, South London, where he grew up. When you have marked with blood, go sleep with you. I spoke to aspiring actors Josh and Mia about how they see their futures in the industry. It's all about opportunities. It's not about how good you are, it's all about who you know as well, because you can be really good, but if you know no one, then it's going to be really hard to get to the top. I don't really know any big people who could, like, help my name get forward. Would you ever think of going somewhere like RADA, somewhere like that? Yeah, definitely, that would be really good. Yeah, probably, but I've heard that Mount View um, is moving next to Peckham Library, so it sounds very, like, very convenient that it's already close to me. <laughs> so I probably God, it's a little there. bit inconvenient. <laughs> How do you imagine it? Intimidating. And what kind of people do you think of when you think of, like, RADA drama students? Probably, like, privileged and well-experienced, well-trained like a background of acting in their family. Posh. And I'm probably wrong to think that, but it kind of springs to mind. The director of RADA, Edward Kemp, agreed to meet me to talk about what they were doing to provide the industry with well-trained and diverse talent. I did was in here with Adrian Lester. Oh, no. So here we are, and we can okay. get some chairs out. 
How do you make sure that there are a diverse body of students here? We are providing bursaries, we're providing support audition waivers so we can make it as accessible as possible. Superficially, in terms of I put the photos up on the wall, I listen to their voices, I hear their accents, I hear their background stories, it doesn't sound too bad. It's certainly not the story that's out there about it being lots of white middle class kids. 25% of our current acting cohort come from BAME backgrounds. 40% of our students we know come from family backgrounds who earn less than 25 grand. RADA students genuinely come from a wide range of backgrounds. So if there are opportunities for a diverse mix of people to get into drama school, then the problem must lie in the roles available to them when they leave. I've come to sit in on a script development class at the National Film and Television School, one of the best in the world. I want to find out why the types of stories being written have not caught up with the diversity of actors looking for work. To get funding for film, if you're a black lesbian with a disability who also happens to be Muslim, <laughs> you're a winner. Like, your <laughs> film is going to get paid. <laughs> really? Oh, I thought you were going to say the opposite. Like, that, I don't think that's what really happens in the end. Where, where are those movies by the black lesbian Muslims? I don't see them. <laughs> Do you think it's getting better? Because like, the conversation's going on and there's all these like diverse young filmmakers about to embark on a career, but uh, is it translating into like actually <coughs> diverse stories and diverse actors? I... <laughs> kind of feel as though every three or four years there's a crossover hit. Somebody like Todd Haynes will come along and make Carol and we'll all applaud him and we'll say look how incredible it is that this beautiful film about lesbian love has been made and then it will fail at the award ceremonies and it will be forgotten and next year we'll have some more films about white men. Yeah, it's right. cyclical, it, yeah. it isn't progress, yeah. it's occasional films which manage to raise their head above the parapet mm. and then be forgotten. That's all that's happening. Mm. There are plenty of diverse and interesting stories out there, but very few of them manage to break through. Successful films and television in this country continually revert back to type. This could be to do with the people making the shows. If you're writing a script, it's about how you see the world. Do you imagine the world as it is, which is with different people of, of colours, and to people with differences, and it's, not, it's beyond race, people with differences, or do you imagine the world um, that is very white, very able-bodied, um, and very heterosexual. Very, very lovely actor came to me a year ago and said, I would like to play what I am, which is a middle-class black guy. So I went out trying to find a British play that we could cast about a middle-class black guy. I couldn't find any. I, I found you know, There are lots about urban black kids. Mm. The story couldn't be told. In, in the end, you have to look at the gatekeepers who makes the choices about what goes on our stages, what is shot. Too many of them look like me. I've come to the BAFTAs, the pinnacle of British film, where the most powerful people in the industry celebrate the year's biggest hits. There's been a lot of talk about um, the issues of diversity, the lack of diversity, the lack of diversity. No? I do want diversity. I definitely want diversity. I think the audience are much more ready for these diverse, interesting stories. I think there's a great, uh, you know, lack of variety tonight. All I can do is worry about making my films and doing what I do and hiring a crew that I work with. If nothing else, the conversation should promote change and that's all we can ask. As the face of the industry, actors have all the right rhetoric, but how much difference can they make? On the red carpet, I found flyers protesting the lack of diversity. Here, yeah, I do colourblind casting and diversity. Leon Herbert, who ran the protest, used to be an actor himself, gaining some success in movies like Alien 3 and Batman. After years of struggling, he quit to start his own studio in Hackney, East London. It's a lot of fear. I'm talking about myself. I, was, I got up and said something. And my, what I'm saying is actually plain old racism. Everyone is just trying to cover it up. And they'll put some up front and say, look what we're doing. And at the moment, they're using John Boyega. So you think, do you think John Boyega is being used As a token, to, yeah. to, to prove a point? Yeah, he's been used to prove a point. And they gave him a BAFTA as a token, you know, it's almost like a token gesture. Say, look, we've got our, we're doing, we're being diverse. Mm. But it's not true. Let's not pussyfoot around it. Not enough people of colour in power green lighting products on the other side. 
When British actor Idris Elba spoke to Parliament, he also said we need to look at who holds the power. Diversity in the modern world is more than just a skin colour. It's a gender, age, disability, sexual orientation, social background, and most, of, most importantly, in my opinion, it's diversity of thought. If you have genuine diversity of thought among people that make television and film, then you accidentally won't shut out some of the groups I just mentioned just now. I wanted to speak to the people who ultimately decide what makes it onto our screens, but every commissioner and producer I approached declined to be interviewed. It seems clear that until these gatekeepers decide to engage, we'll continue to see the same stories with the same actors. I think once my mum said, oh, well, if you don't make it in acting, what do you want to be? And I kind of said, I never really thought about it because I've always kind of had it as a goal. And I think if I try hard, I'll probably be able to reach the goal. The TV world helps shape our real world. It's the window into our world. Change is coming, but it's going to take its sweet time. O brasileiro ele gosta daquela coisa mais sexuada, daquela mulata que aceita tudo e só serve para sambar.